Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Momentum. And good morning to you too, our online family and friends. And welcome to Momentum Sunday service right here in Momentum Church, 568 Trinity Creek Cove. Now, family, we know what today is, that today is Palm Sunday. They said a triumphant entry into Jerusalem, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all recorded. Yet, I'm not gonna keep in what would be considered tradition this morning. Today's scripture reading will be coming from the book of Matthew, of course. Yet, I'm coming from chapter 15. And I will be reading from the King James Version. That's Matthew chapter 15. King James Version. I'm going to start at verse 4. And this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus says, for God commanded, saying, honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, whoever says say to the father or mother, it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his mother or his I mean, his father or his mother shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God none effect by your traditions. You hypocrites. Well, the liars prophesy in saying, this people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me exactly what they did right Hosanna or Hosanna the highest praise and what did they do later the same mouth the same people but in vain they do worship me teaching false doctrine, the commandments of man. And he called the multitude and said unto them, hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defile of a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defile of a man. And we know our words, the power is in the tongue. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Yeah. The real reason why God knows your heart. Let's go before our Father in prayer. Father God, most grateful heavenly Father. Father God, even as your word says, Father God, we ask that you bless the hearers of your word, Father. 
the readers of your word, Father. But more importantly, Father God, the doers of your everlasting word, Father. So, Father God, right now, Father God, we just come right now, Lord, in all with you, Father God. Father God, we right now, we just thank you and lift you up even in this place, Father God, for being a good father, Father. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for being mindful of us, Father, because you are the father of good gifts, Father. And Father God, one of your greatest gifts was the one that's seated at your right hand now, Father. So we thank you, Father God, for sending your word, Father God, as your word would never return to you void, Father. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of majesty, Father. So we thank you now, Father, for sitting up high and looking low, Father God, upon us. And thank you for being mindful, Father God, because you have given us another opportunity, Father God, to come and to praise you, Father God. So, Father God, right now, we will give you the fruits of our lips, Father God. Father God, we will exalt you in this place, Father God. We will give you our hallelujahs, Father, because you are truly worthy of it, Father God. Now, Father God, Holy Spirit, search us, Father God, because, Father God, this is not mouth service, Father God. Father God, because we truly do worship you in this place, Father. Father God, we will worship you and we will build lives, Father. So, Father God, right now, Holy Spirit, we're just asking you just to have free reign on today, Father. Do what you need to see fit, what needs to be done in us and through us, Father. Father God, right now, we're even asking you, Father God, to speak to the man of God, the messenger on today, the angel of this house, Father. Because as you prepare the word for the day, Father God, your word will fulfill what you have sent it to do, Father God. Now, Father God, we may have an agenda, Father God, but you have the plan, Father. So, Holy Spirit, we just move it out your way. And we usher you in even more, Father. Father God, we live up to you our praise and worship, Father God. Father God, our resistance unto you, Father God. And we come against any distraction, any plan of the enemy, Father God. Because as your word says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, Father, you lift up a standard, Father God. And Father God, we would do things in decent and in order, Father God the way that you have ordered our steps, Father, on today, Father. Now, Father God, we just love you and we adore you. We worship you even the more, Father. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Father. Whatever you need to be done, Father God, just simply have your way. Hallelujah, Father God. And Father God, we adore you, we worship you, and cherish you, Father. And it's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. We send up our thanks to you, O oh God. Yes, Lord, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, God, and we enter into your courts with praise. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That we will walk by faith and not by sight, O oh God. Hallelujah. We're not going to worry about what we see before us, God. We're not going to focus on any trials and tribulations that have come our way, oh God. But instead, we're going to count it all joy. Hallelujah. That you're making perfect in us your perfect work, oh God. And we're working patience in us, oh God. Hallelujah. So God, we bless your holy name this morning. We lift you up for who you are, oh God. Hallelujah. We will charge the atmosphere with our worship, oh God. We will give you what you are due right now in this very moment, God. You are Abba Father, which means you are always looking out for us and you're always protecting us, God. We thank you that you are our shield of protection and we thank you that you're the buckler, which means you're the secured protection of the shield, oh God. Hallelujah. We give you glory because you are provider. Hallelujah. Jehovah Jehovah you are oh God hallelujah not only we're not speaking of the material things that you're able to provide but we're speaking of the spiritual things that you give to us God whatever it is that we need God whatever is ailing us oh God you said that we can cast our cares upon you oh God and learn of you Lord so right now Lord let us cast 
cast every care upon you, oh God. Let us give it back to you, oh God. And for our ashes, you will give us beauty. Hallelujah. You will give us a garment of praise, oh God. Hallelujah. So God, we lift you up, oh God. We magnify you, oh God. Lord, you said you inhabit the praises of your people, oh God. So we will lift you up, oh God, and we will give you what you are due this morning. Hallelujah. God, you are love. Hallelujah. So we thank you that we're exchanging hurt for love this morning. Hallelujah. God, you are joy in a time of sorrow. So we're exchanging sorrow for joy this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you that you are peace, oh God. So we're exchanging our chaos for peace in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we bless you and we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let us give you what you are due this morning, God. We bless you. And there's no one else like you. You are our peace, oh God. In the middle of a storm, you are our joy in a time of sorrow. In our grieving, you are joy. In our hurt, you are joy. Hallelujah. Where there's pain, you give us healing. In the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. Hallelujah. There's no one else like you, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you that there's no one else like you. Hallelujah. You are the one true living God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, you are sovereign God. You are the sovereign king. You are in control of it all, God. That is why we walk by faith and not by sight, because you are in control, God. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Lord, and we declare that you are good. There's so many reasons that we can declare why you are good, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift up our praise, God, to you this morning. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. We lift up our praise. Oh, you're so
you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. So good. So good. So good. Yeah. Yes, you are. 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 And you are good. why he's good hallelujah so many reasons why 
why he's good. Hallelujah. If you don't have one reason, I dare you just to think about you being here right now. That's why he's good, yeah. He woke you up this morning. That's why he's good. And he started you on your way. That's why he's good. So we worship you. We worship you, Lord, because you are good. And your mercies endureth forever. That's why you're good, yeah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that your mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. So no matter what, God, when we fall and we make a mistake, we get up again. That's your mercy. Hallelujah. We thank you that your grace is sufficient, God. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name, God. You give us what we need. That's why you're good. So we declare how great you are, God. Hallelujah. There are not enough words to describe how great you are, God. But we thank you that we will use what we have to give you all that you deserve, God. Hallelujah. You're the mighty King, God. You are the Lord of Lords. You're ruler over our lives. Darkness, you give hope, yeah. you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Yeah.
our confession he is great are you lord he's greater than anything great are you lord yes lord he's greater than anything yes you are He's mightier than anything, yes, you are. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. He's bigger than anything, yes, you are. He's stronger than anything, yes, you are. Hallelujah. You're greater than anything, yes, you are. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. More powerful than anything, yes, you are. Great are you, Lord. Yeah. He's stronger than anything, yes, you are. Great are you, Lord. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. More powerful than anything, yes, you are. Great are you, Lord. No matter the situation, you're greater than anything. Great are you, Lord. I will keep my sights on you, you're greater than anything. We're declaring that he's Lord over our lives because we're saying how great he is. That means we don't look to our problems, but we look to the one who is the problem solver. You're greater than anything. Yes, you are. You're greater than anything. Yes, you are. No music for a second. I want to hear the people of God. Greater than anything. Yes, you are. Come on, he inhabits the praises of his people. Isn't he greater than anything? Hasn't he brought you through everything? <laughs> Great. Yeah. You ought to say, I'm still standing. That's why you're great, God. Great. Hallelujah, you're greater than anything, yes you are. Greater than anything, yes you are. More powerful than anything, yes you are. God. Yes, God. This is 
is how we fight our battles. The enemy's back is being broken. Keep singing. This is how we fight our battles. Yes, God. Yes, God. Always. I won't be silent, Lord. I won't be silent, Lord. That's all the enemy wants you to do is to stop worshiping. He don't care if you pray. He don't care if you give. But just don't give God the worship that he's doing. He wants you to focus more on what you're going through than who God is. And the moment you lose sight of how powerful your worship is, is the moment that you begin to fall. I won't be silent. I will always, 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 always. My God, my God. It's difficult for some of us to keep going. It's difficult. But I could stay here for days. Hallelujah. Because all I got to offer God is my worship. All I got, because my worship is unique. You cannot worship God from my circumstances. You cannot give God praise according to how he brought me through. And when you decide that no matter what hell comes to your door, that you're going to honor God, that you're going to open the lips of your mouth and speak sweet things to your Lord, no matter how bad it gets, that's when you got deliverance. That's when the enemy knows he can't hold you. Oh, but if you stay quiet, Jesus looked at the ground and said, I'll make these rocks praise you. But he will much prefer that you give him praise, yeah. that you honor him, that, that you tell him how he's kept you. Ooh, my, 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 I'm trying to move on, I'm trying to move on. But God has kept some of us in situations that we should have lost our minds we should have lost all of our assets. We should have hightailed it out to church. But God is a keeper. He is a promise keeper. He will not let you fall. He will not allow you to be utterly destroyed. David said, I've been young and I've been old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. See, see, the challenge that we're having is we don't understand our value in God. We are associating our value with our mess. We, we, are, we think that our sin has discounted our value to God. Oh, death, where is thou sting? My, my, my. There is deliverance in this house on today. You don't have to leave out of this place the way you walked in. It is available. God wants to make an exchange with you. He wants to give you a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. He wants to give you beauty for the ashes. God desires to trade with you on today. God desires for you to leave what you got and take what he has. Hallelujah. 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 Won't you give him what you got today? Won't you give him what you got? Why, why don't you give him what you got and take what he has? Why don't you give him what you got? Why don't you pack up all your mess and why don't you leave it? Don't take it with you on today. Why don't you pack up all your mess 
and leave it. Give it to God. Give it to God. Leave your mess. Give it to God. The Bible says he is likened unto a consuming fire. Moses said, I must turn aside and see this great feat. How the bush burns, but is never consumed. He is like a consuming fire. What should destroy you, refines you. Oh my, oh my, oh my. What, what, should, have, what should have just completely taken you out has made you better. It has deepened your worship. It has extended your prayer life. It has caused you to study his scriptures. What was supposed to, what was sent to destroy you has made you better. My, my, my. My, my, my. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise for who he is. Let's give the Lord some praise for how he's kept us. Let's give the Lord some praise, the praise that he is due for being a good, good father. Oh my, I'm trying, I got a message today too, but I just, I, we, sometimes we just need to talk. Sometimes we just need to talk because life ain't fair. Things happen that we can't explain. But our God never sleeps nor slumbers. He is a very present help in your time of struggle. His name is such as a strong tower and those that are righteous run into it and are saved. God is delivering his people on today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's make our declaration because I'm going to give you this word. You ain't going you you to get out of this. Come on, let's make our declaration. Come on, say, King Jesus has supplied all my needs. I am excelling and living abundantly in the kingdom of God. Let's say it one more time because you got to get this in your spirit because some of y'all walk around defeated too, too much. Come on, say, King Jesus has supplied all my needs. And I am excelling and living abundantly in the kingdom of God. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in his presence. We thank God for the people of God that are gathered here on today. I do honor my wife of 34 years, Lady India Watson. God bless you. Also honor Elder Davis, man of God in this house. We thank God for all of our ministers that are situated in the place today, Minister Peoples. Amen. We also honor our deacons. We have a visiting deacon with us. <laughs> all the way from Chicago. Amen. We thank God for our Chicago family. God bless y'all. Love you, cuz. Love you. I, the things that bless a pastor ain't the Holy Ghost handshakes. It's presence. It's just the presence. The presence of his people, the support. Amen. The way mother says amen. Amen. That, that, that encourages me. I was talking to Lanier yesterday. Lynette said, Mother, have you hyped up there? I said, yep, she sure do. Bless your mother, Karen. God bless you. Amen. Lady Cage, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. There's a word from the Lord on today. We want to talk about testing your faith. If you got any faith at all, it's going to be tested. If you think that you're going to escape this life without what you say you believe being tested, you are sadly mistaken. If you say you trust God, we're going to find out. Your faith will be tested. And the reason that your faith is tested is simple. That's because your test only comes to see that you have maintained what you obtained. There is no teacher that will give you a test on material that has not been taught. So, so if you are hearing messages full of faith, if you are reading about the, the great faith of the men and the women of the Bible, then the faith that you have must be tested. The second reason your faith has to be tested is because a test and a trial are two different things. 
Some of us think that every test we come into is a trial, and every trial that we come into is a test, but they are two separate things. Are you listening to what I'm saying? See, see, the test is done on behalf of the teacher. The trial is on behalf of the community. The trial has to do with the kingdom. The test has to do with your personal faith. And, and, when, and when, you, when you go through tests, what happens is either you pass them or you repeat them. Pastor, I'm stuck. When you go through tests, either you pass them or you repeat them. Pastor, you don't get it. I'm stuck. When you go through tests, either you pass the test or you repeat them. You are never going to be allowed to graduate without passing the test. You are stuck in the second grade if you cannot pass the year-end second grade exam. Are you listening to me? God desires for you to grow. God does not desire for you to be a carnal Christian and never have the ability to, to deal with the adversary in a public setting. God expects you to be able to, to maturely handle his word. God expects for your spiritual gifts to be in operation. But if you keep failing the same test, pastor, I'm stuck. If you don't pass the test, you will repeat the test. So I want to talk to you today about testing your faith. I want, to, I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 5. It's a very popular passage of Scripture, and I've looked at it for a couple of weeks to decide on whether or not to use it, and I believe I got the green light to use it. I want to talk to you about Naaman the leper. My, my, my. Whew. Naaman the leper. Let's read a little bit, and then we're going to consider Naaman. We're going to consider his leprosy, and we're going to consider his healing. But most of all, we're going to look at the test that Naaman had to go through. In 2 Kings chapter 5, we want to go down to verse 5. We want to read all the way through verse 10. It says, And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand. Somebody say six thousand. 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have therefore sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Verse 7, And it came to pass that when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man thus sent unto me to recover a man of leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Verse 8, And it was so when, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him now come to me, and he shall know. Somebody say, he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Verse 9. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times. Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word on today, God, because your word is making a difference in us, God. We thank you that every time, God, we interact with your word, God. It changes us. So, Father, for these next few moments, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would have your way in this house. We yield our service to you. We thank you for the deliverance and the understanding that you're bringing in this house on today. Now, as for me, Lord, I decrease so that you may increase in this place and in the hearts of your people. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Naaman's 
name meant pleasant. Oh, my. His name means pleasant. But how can a man be pleasant with leprosy? If we would allow ourselves to be emerged or submerged or, or just in this word, we will, we will see very quickly that we have a lot in common with Naaman. Because Naaman's battle wasn't a public battle. You see, in all the public battles, Naaman was a winner. Naaman was just like Mayweather. He was undefeated on the battlefield. But when Naaman got home, Naaman had something that he dealt with. He was a leper. And you got to understand the disease of leprosy. It is not like any other disease. We understand a lot about it today, but back then there was very little understanding about Naaman's condition. The first thing that really messed people up was that it took between 5 to 20 years to manifest. So that was an understanding that when you had leprosy that you got it from a neighbor, but that wasn't necessarily true. See, leprosy is not, uh, 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 in, in, in opposition to what they believed back then, leprosy is not spread by human touch. And they had camps for those that were lepers so that they did not have uh, uh, any interaction with folks that were non-lepers. But the reality is that we know today is that leprosy is not, not uh, transmitted by human touch, but it is by droplets. So that means you could touch somebody and not get leprosy. But they didn't know that back then. So Naaman was subject to the amount of information that was available in his culture. Naaman did not have the benefit of knowing what we know today. And the reality is that in our lives, we are suffering from things that we only know what our culture or our group of people around us has taught us, but there is more information available concerning your situation. One of the challenges that, that we have as people is that when we win outside, people assume that we win inside. But the truth is, no matter how well you shined up, you got a little bit of naming in you. Just not a lot. Just, just enough to bother you. Not enough to bother me. I can't see it. I don't know it. But you know it. See, I put on a suit this morning, but, but I, I might as well have on raggedy clothes. Because no matter how well I think I do in life, I'm always reminded of my hang-ups right. when it's just me and God. Yeah. And God, even though he knows that you're not a leper, he also knows that you're struggling with something privately. Oh. Whew, this ain't what I want to preach today. But God is, is here to let you know that what you're going through is only a test. Yes, Lord. See, when you're in tests, they're always open book. You, you'll never be put in a situation where you're tested and you're not given access to the truth. You will never be in a test. Now, when you're in a trial, you don't have access to the truth. And when you're in a trial, it's a life or death situation. Yeah. Please understand, you're either going to get acquitted or convicted when you're in a trial. Yeah. But when you're in a test, you always get do-overs. It may be uncomfortable to have to go through it more than once, but you always get do-overs. But when the real day hits and you're actually on trial for what you believe, if you get that wrong, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And many of us, many of us are in that testing season, and we want to know how that we ex escape it. We want to know how, Lord, how can I get out of this never-ending round? I'm just running around Pete's barn 
month in, month out, I keep going through the same things. How can I come out of this? Well, I want to give you three things that I saw in the Scripture that will help you succeed in your testing season. The first thing that I want to give you is this. There will be an adversary that has you outmatched. Listen, don't be surprised when what you're up against is bigger than who you see yourself as. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's why you think it's your end. It ain't your end. It's just a test. The adversary that God puts in front of you, Brother Dallas, is going to be bigger than anything you ever faced it. But it's still just a test. You know, I, I saw some upsets in college basketball. I saw a little team from Oakland that didn't have the legacy of a pedigree organization and tradition of an organization like Kentucky, but I saw them win. Why? Because it was just a test. It was just a basketball game. The reason we get stuck is because we make our test bigger than our God. We begin to say things about our test that we've never said about our God. We begin to describe our test as if it's the Alpha and the Omega. Like it's the author and finisher of our faith. No, it's just a test. And you're going to make it. Or you're going to take it again. It's up to you. We, we have to understand that our adversary has us outmatched. And, and if you were standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with what you're being tested for, ain't no way that you could beat this. But God, ain't no way that, that you measure up to what you're facing. And you got, and you got, to, you got to grasp that. You, you got to come to grips that with what I'm being tested with, I'm not going to overcome it by myself. I've got to have God on my side. I've got to know that the Holy Spirit is leading me in wisdom and understanding. I've got to put aside my little dance, and I've got to be serious about my God to make it out this test. Mm -hmm. In your season of testings, don't fall back. Keep pressing forward. Shh, don't fall back. There is a way that seemeth right unto man. But in the end, it's destruction. Don't fall back. Don't go backwards in your tests. Keep pushing forward. And, and, and listen, the reason that most of us go back, because there's no resistance to go back. The enemy will never stop you from going back to who you used to be. You, you, you will find a welcoming committee for you and your bad habits. They're having a cookout like you just did 1129. Boy, we sure glad you're back. Woo! We thought you had got away. Listen, there is no resistance to go backwards. All the resistance that you face is going forward. And that adversary, they, they got this thing where, where when you're in a public space that you can make yourself bigger than what you really are. You know, you got to take up more space. Stand with your legs wide, broaden your shoulders out. You want to look bigger than you really are when you really like this, but you're standing around like this. And that's what the enemy is doing in your test. He's just walking around all swole. Like, like, ain't no way you can defeat me. So I better just retreat back to where it's safe because I have no opposition in the old me. All of my opposition is in me being born again. Ain't no opposition to going back. And that's what the enemy desires. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Back to the way you used to be. Back before, you know, B.C. That's what Pastor Cade always said. You're B.C. Before Christ. But, you know, come on back. Come on back. Go, come on, do, do it. You know, I got a financial crisis. Well, I ain't going to work no overtime. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call cuz and them. Mm hmm I'm going to dust this ski mask off and wait up here by the ATM and don't get this bag. And, Pastor, we don't do that. Not no more. <laughs> Not no more. You got delivered. But all of a sudden, I was talking to Deacon Lanier years ago. 
Now, I ain't going to tell all your business, Deacon Lanier, but I'm going to tell a little bit of it. We was talking, and we was like, man, I remember how we used to get him, woozy, woozy. That's how he say, woozy, woozy. And, and then we wop, wop, and wop, wop. And they see, you know, you call them, them essays, and they wop, wop. He said, it's easy to do that. It's a phone call away. And that's what, uh, that's what we face as men of God. Go back and do it how you used to do it. Sisters, y'all ain't got a way. I, I, know, I know what you're going through. Because he told you, if you just do what he asks, he'll take care of all that for you. He wants you to compromise. He, he wants you to lay down so he can do his business. And then when he get up and walk away, he got something on a nightstand for you. Oh, this is real. This is real. This is what's really going on. And y'all running around here talking about, how you doing? Blessed and highly favored. No, you struggling. And you need to be honest with God about the season of testing that you're in. And you don't need to make it so easy for you to backslide. See, the thing is, if you would tell on yourself, it'll make it more difficult for you to backslide. Stop telling everybody what you're going through. Keep it between you and God and somebody that you really trust. Every, y'all done heard this a million times. Digging everybody ain't, ain't disappointed about your mess. Some of them are going to celebrate it. And you're running around telling them just, just because they blood, just because they your best friend, your BFF from when you was three years old, thinking, thinking that if I share it with them that it ain't going to go nowhere. Now your stuff on CNN, baby. You on CNN. Keep your mouth shut. The second thing, and I'm going to get back to the Scripture in a minute. Just, just labor with me for a moment, Mother. Will you do that? Amen. Just labor with me. The second thing that you want to make sure that you're doing in your test of season, make sure you're following God's instructions. Yeah. See, we get it mixed up. We just follow instructions. I'm going to give you a few moments to get that. Y'all running around here following instructions. Y'all need to follow God's instructions. What did the prophet say to Naaman? Go down there to the old dirty Jordan. Get in it. Get out of it. Get in it. Get out of it. Get in it. Get out of it. Get in it. Get. In it, get. Why I got to do all that? Follow God's instructions. See, the problem that we have today is that folks got itchy ears, and we're looking for shortcuts, and we're looking to work around what God told us to do, because what God told us to do is very uncomfortable. It may make me look foolish. Well, can I, can I be transparent with you? If you're not willing to be foolish with God, He ain't willing to do nothing foolish for you. Your, your relationship with God is an exchange. Now, he's given more than you can ever give, but he's also expecting when you ask for something that there is some sort of seed that you're putting out. It ain't got nothing to do with money. Sometimes it's got to do with your respect in the community. God is looking for you to bring something to him so he'll have something to work with. You got to follow his instructions no matter how radical they are because God can deliver you, but the instructions from homegirl may not work. They're a lot easier. They're a whole lot easier. I can follow, I can follow Nene and them instructions good. But God's instructions is a little far-fetched. But if you want the deliverance that God has, follow his instructions. Let your offering be obedience. Don't let it be a 20 spot. Don't let your offering be something that you can easily replace. Let your offering to God be your obedience. Listen what David said. David said, if it was an offering, I could have given that. But I see that you want my spirit to be broken and that you want my heart to be contrite. In other words, you don't, you're not concerned about my comfort. What you're concerned about is how bad I want you. <laughs> see, nobody want God no more. They just want his benefits. Listen, you don't get God's benefits without him. And, and one of the most dangerous teachings that's going forth is, is that, that you can sow your way into God's favor. 
if that's the case, why are people worth millions of dollars? People that have all the fame in the world swallowing bullets. If you can buy your way into God's grace, you can't. It's free. It's for those that are willing to follow his instructions. Don't, don't, don't hold on to your way of doing things so long that God stops giving instructions. God, God, if God told us, do not cast your pearl before the swine that it may be trampled on, why would God say something that he's not willing to do? There's going to come a season where God says, fine, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say it no more. And God's going to shut up. He's going to stop giving you those very specific instructions that he's been giving you because you've demonstrated over a season of time that you don't want nothing to do with God's way to get delivered. I'm almost finished. What time is it? Oh, Lord, we're going to get out uh, on time today. Listen, we, 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 before, before we go back into our text, we're going to look at verses 11 through 13. But before we go back into our text, we got to understand that God has put people in our lives for purposes. It may not feel like they're there for any real reason. As a matter of fact, if you've ever had a gnat flying around your face while you're trying to eat at the picnic, that gnat surely does not have a purpose in my life. Surely I must kill this gnat. Surely God did not create this gnat for my betterment. God, send a gnat-eating insect, please. There are things and people in our lives that we do not want to hear from that God has sent to speak into our lives. We don't want to hear from them. We don't want to hear from them because they're discredited. But you got to understand, if, 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 you, if you read your Bible, you'll find, Brother Dallas, that there was a season where God used a donkey to speak to a man and to let him know what his plans were. So if God can use a donkey to share his plans, God has strategically placed people that seem uh, uh, like, like they ain't really, but they really there to speak the word of the Lord. There were two people in this story that, that made the difference for Naaman. The first one was a little girl that had been taken away captive when the Syrians defeated Israel. And she was a maid to Naaman's wife. And she saw Naaman's secret battles. And look at what she told Naaman. And this is up in the first part of the text. Look at what she told Naaman. There's a prophet in Israel that can heal you, bro. Now, if this little girl had not been taken captive, if this little girl did not have humility and a heart for God, where would Naaman be? Naaman wouldn't be in this book. But there was a little girl that was obedient to the word, to the word of God, to the will of God. There was a little girl that, that despite her circumstances, she was a slave. She was a servant, and she didn't have her mom and daddy no more. But she could see a situation that God could deliver from. And she said, listen, if you would get to Israel, there's a man that can heal you. And, and, and the other, the other ins insignificant voice was that of the king of Israel. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. But necessary. Because when God does something, the Bible says that God, Lady Cade, is a God of order. So he is not going to allow things to happen that he's blessed in an unorderly fashion. Are you listening to me?
See, there were kings involved. And when you have kings involved, the communication must go from king to king. You can't go into somebody else's kingdom and start running up and down the street and talking to whoever you want to talk to. No, that's somebody else's kingdom. Respect protocol and the kingdom of that or the king of that kingdom. And that's what uh, um, the king of Syria did. He sent a letter to Jeroboam. I believe that was the king of Israel at that time. If it wasn't, correct me later. But he sent, a, he sent a letter to Jeroboam. Now watch what Jeroboam did. Jeroboam read the letter. He trying to start something. That's what the text says. He said he's trying to start another fight. He know that I don't have the authority. I might be the king, but that authority has not been given to me to determine life or death. Y'all got to understand what I just told you. There are some people that you're running to that have no authority. Never let somebody tell you no, they can't tell you yes. We, we got people that are running around just like our adversary and painting themselves as all powerful when they have no authority. And the kingdom received that letter. The king received that letter and looked at it and said, wait a minute. I don't have power over life and death. In other words, your situation is a death sentence, Naaman. And I don't have the authority to lift it. Now, you, you got to understand something. You got to understand something. The king that sent the letter to the king of Israel understood that there was power in the land, and he, stopped, he started with the head and worked his way down. See, the problem that, that we have, we start at the bottom hoping to work our way up. No, 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 no. We wrestle not with flesh and blood. But our battle is with spiritual wickedness in high places, yes, principalities. That's what we're battling. Yes. So why are you talking to a devil when you need to go straight to the principality and speak the Word of God to it? There are some strongholds. There are some things that have our people bound, and we keep talking to the thing that bound them. But you got to talk to who's ever Lord over the stronghold. You've got the authority to open it with your mouth because you've been given dominion. You've got the authority to call those things that be not as though they already were. It's in you to do right and make changes. But you keep dealing with these, you got to go higher. So he was right, but the king didn't understand, the king of Israel didn't understand what to do with it. Let me, let me, I, don't, I don't mess my little note up. Let me give you this nugget. Write this down. I don't mess that slam up. Listen, write this down. Never listen to the small, insignificant voices in your test. Don't, don't, don't give them an audience. Those small, insignificant voices. Now, you ain't got to be no bully. You ain't got to be arrogant. You ain't got to be none of that. But if it's a small, insignificant voice that does not have authority in the arena that you're playing in, don't entertain it. Just smile. I remember when we bought our first house, uh, uh, and we, 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 were, we were negotiating with the first house, and boy, I wanted to choke this woman. You know what she did, Elder? She just smiled. I would ask for something. She'd go, no. I'm like, no, I'm ready to box. I'm ready to box because I'm trying to get something. No, not going to happen. I'm like, I'm trying to make a deal here. And I learned something that day. When, when you're dealing with, with some, uh, some power that ain't got no power, you don't sit there and, and, and go back and forth with them. You recognize that they have no authority. And you ignore them. You be pleasant with them because, you know, you never know. You may win some by showing them love. But you be pleasant with them, but you don't entertain them. You got to understand who God has called you to be. This is one of the biggest problems in the church today is that we suffer from real identity crisis. We, we think we church members. 
Ain't no church member. I hope you're more than a church member. I mean, anybody can join a church. An atheist can join a church. But you should be kingdom citizens. You, you, should, you should be covered by the blood. You should be the righteousness of Christ Jesus. You, you should know who you are. You, you got to stop dealing with insignificant folks that's trying to bring you down to their level and get you all mixed up in the game. You better seek, you better seek the place that God has called you to operate in and stay there when you get there. Stay there. Now, let me close. Let's look at, let's look at verse uh, 11 through 13 in our text. And, and, and this is where, this is, it's going to get real. And, and I love you with the love of the Lord. But I am so beyond being impressive. I am so beyond likes. Listen, this, this may be hard to stomach, but I don't need you to like me as much as I need you to respect the Word of God that's in me. I don't need you to celebrate me as much as I need you to worship the one true living God. Are you understand what I'm saying? And, and we, we had a place now, my God, where, you know, keep the lights on. Stop cutting the lights off when you go to church. Leave the lights on. We had, we had a bad place. Watch this in verse 11, and I'm closing. Verse 11, it says, but Naaman was wroth and went away and said, behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of his Lord and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not a banner and, and far par rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage and his servants. Here's one of them insignificant voices. Or here's one of those small voices that God has sent. His servant came, came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean. This is where... We, we, we tripped up. Now, y'all know I love you now. We got to deal with some stuff right here, though. I'm closing. And we got to deal with some stuff right here. You don't get to choose how God delivers you. Y'all y'all know how y'all have kids, and, and, and they're going to tell you what they want to eat, and you already cooking. You don't get that choice. God will deliver you in whatever way he sees fit to deliver you. As a matter of fact, your deliverance is always tied to a test. Your, your deliverance is never just free. That you just walk up and just say, okay, I'll take this deliverance, that deliverance, and supersize that. No, no, no. Your, your, deliverance, your deliverance is tied to a test. Your deliverance is tied to something that don't make sense to you. And God is seeking to see if you, would, if you will follow his instructions and not just anybody's instructions. God is looking to see if, if, if no matter what he tells you to do, if you're going to do, gonna do it. See, the problem that we have is, is that we haven't reached a place in our faith where we're willing to look stupid for God yet. See, we, we are under the impression that God has an inferiority complex and everything about his people has to be shiny, crispy, and new. But God has not an inferiority complex. And if he didn't have an inferiority complex, that means he may require you to do something that don't make you look good. Yes, Hallelujah. Naaman got mad at his blessing. Yes. Naaman got mad at his blessing. Naaman looked at the blessing and said to himself, are you crazy? <laughs> See, the, 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 the water that he wanted him to bathe in wasn't like, it was like the Wolf River or the mighty, mighty, muddy Mississippi. <laughs> not, not like them creeks that run through the Appalachian. You know what I'm talking about, Brother Jensel, how you ride on Interstate 40 through the Appalachian Mountains, and you look over and you see those crystal clear springs and the water just tumbling, and you see some white water, and then you see the tubers coming down with their favorite beverage and the radio black. It wasn't like that water. It was like the Wolf River with logs hanging in, snakes slithering out of it. It was nasty. And God said, I want you to go bathe in the 
worst water that you can find, and that's where your deliverance is. God, I'm already dirty. I'm already dirty. I don't need to get no more dirt. God says, I need a little more dirt on you. I need you to get in. I need you to get in into this dirty part so, so, that, so, that, so that you can be clean because the way that you've been doing it has gotten you where you are. And if you want something you never had, and if you keep doing what you've been doing, you're going to still get the same results. But now if you expect different results, that's the definition of what? Y'all know that, right? That if, if y'all know that, why are we here? Why, why are you going through the same test for the fifth year straight? The 20th year, oh my God, mother. Not <laughs> why, why are we going through? Now, now I, I, will, I will confess that there are some things that I should have been overcome, overcome years ago, but I'm still there, and it's because of this message. Because when, when, when God calls you to do something, it don't look like you ought to do that, then, then, then you're going to struggle. I remember the most hellacious years of my life were the years that I told God that surely you got somebody else to do this. I'm busy making this bag right now. And if I start doing what you want to do, I'm going to be broke out here. I almost lost my mind trying to run from God. I almost came unglued at the seams telling God how to run his kingdom. Listen, if God called you, he's got you. If God told you to do it, there's something working in the background that you don't have access to that you need to follow God's instructions. If, if God say start the business, you, you got you on the clock. You're going to mess around and look up and see your business in somebody else's hands. Because the business is needed for the kingdom, and he thought you was the best vessel for it. He told you to tell that person you're sorry, and you still ain't said you're sorry. OMG. He told you to get up at 5 o'clock and pray, and you, and you still talking about, well, mother got it. He told you to be at Bible study, and you said, I'm going to look at it online. Yes, Lord. Okay. I ain't talking to you, Deacon Williams, yet. <laughs> but since you want to shake your head and fold your arms, <laughs> we can deal with it. This is called grace. It's called grace. Uh, Lord, I'm going to turn them over to you. But can I say this, and, and this is not to, to hit anybody, this is not to hurt anybody, but, but if you are at home and not at work, you got gas in your car, you got a roof over your head, you got food in your refrigerator, and you decide to stay at home doing Bible study instead of coming out and being with the saints doing Bible study, then, then, then you, you're limiting yourself with God because you're demonstrating that you're not being obedient. Because I've said more than one occasion, the, the, you know, the streaming service for those that can't get the service. It ain't for your convenience. I'm gonna hold on to this sister in case they start swinging. <laughs> Cause these saints is fighting in 2024. <laughs> God, God desires, and see the thing about momentum that we are we are we are under an unusual anointing. You don't miss it. You never know when God's gonna give you that breakthrough. And, and when you when you think that you oh what am I this ain't am I when you think that you can just lay out. And then watch the service whenever you feel like it. You're demonstrating to God that you ain't ready yet. You don't never know what God wants to do. God may do it because we go out to eat after, after, after Bible study. God may do it at the meal table. You never know what God is willing to do.
and when he's willing to do it. But, but when, you, when you ignore what God is trying to do, then you set yourself up for disappointment. And, and, and the test is, is only to see if you've maintained what you've obtained. Yes, and, and you know what? I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the servant of the Lord. I'm, I'm literally a slave to the gospel. There's nowhere I can go except to his word. I don't have any alternative. I have no plan B. Until I flatline, this is what I do. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and if you don't have that mentality, then God's best ain't for you. And be prepared to labor for your life. Yes, Lord. But, but if, you, if you have an understanding that this word, your presence, and, 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 and the word that, that, that I'm receiving, and, excuse me, and the prayer time, and all these things, and the works that we're putting forth, if, if that is paramount in your life, God's best is for you. But if, if, God's, if God's things are not paramount in your life, just don't expect God's best. You, you still got fire insurance, don't worry. You ain't going to hell, don't worry. But you got, you, you got to readjust. You got to readjust your expectations to be associated with the faith that you're demonstrating. Because your faith is not about what you say, it's about what you... Hallelujah. There's no evidence of faith by your talk. The evidence of faith is through your actions. What did James say? Right? Then he also, he said, faith without works is dead. But he also said this, if you show me your faith, I'll show you mine. But I'll only show you mine through my works. Y'all sat down in them chairs because y'all trusted them chairs. Y'all didn't look back. Y'all didn't check the cushion to make sure it was screwed on tight. Y'all just dropped it. Why? Because you got faith in them chairs. God say, do something. Well, Lord, let me uh, name a name a a cut a fool. Full of leprosy and cut a fool when God told him how to get delivered. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. Here is the essence of your test. And I'm, I'm finished. The essence of your test is this. Are you going to leave the same way you came? That's what your test is about. Are you going to walk out, not this place, but whatever place God put you in, are you going to walk out just like you came? That's what your test is about. Or are you going to receive from God because you were obedient all the way? See, the writer of Hebrews says that, that you have not demonstrated obedience all the way to shedding the blood. So, so you, you cannot compare what you've gone through with what you're supposed to go through. Because you didn't be obedient all the way to the point where you shed your blood to remain in obedience. Because that's what Christ did. He shed his blood to remain in obedience. You ain't went that far yet. In verse 13, and I'm done for real. I promise you I'm done. The music can start playing softly. In verse 13, a voice of reason came to him. And on today... Lord, be willing. I'm the voice of reason in your head. And, and, and the voice of reason, it says this. It is your good and reasonable service. God is not requiring extra. What God is asking you to do for your deliverance is your good and re- I'm the I am the voice in your head. God is saying that this is your good and your reasonable service. God ain't asking you to go out and start building a a pyramid. God God ain't asking you to give all of your money. God ain't asking you to sacrifice your firstborn. God, God ain't asking you to get out the boat and walk on water. God has asked you just to follow my basic instructions. The test is whether or not you will leave from your interaction with God the same way that you came. And here's reality. Reality is 
is that if you're in a test, your adversary is bigger than you can manage on your own. The reality is that you need to follow the instructions from the prophets of God. The reality is you need to listen to the small voices that God sends while you're in that test because that's where your deliverance lies. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I, I, want, I want us on today to reset. I just, I just want us just to, just to be honest with God about where we are because he already knows and all he needs is your confession. If you offer up your confession of where you are spiritually, God can bring you out of where you are. He can take you to a place that's greater than where you are. But you've got to be transparent about where you are. Listen, it's only a test. If the emergency had been real, you would have been giving very specific instructions. John 3.17 tells us that God is not interested in our destruction. Don't let the devil tell you that God is trying to destroy you. No, he's trying to strengthen you. And these trials and these tests that we're going through are designed to make us better believers so that we can help somebody. Not so that we can accumulate stuff for ourselves, but so that we can be a help to somebody. We got to know how to help each other. And you'll never know how to help each other until you get deliverance. As long as you're struggling, you don't know how to help nobody. The airline says put your mask on first before you go to put on somebody else's mask. The scripture says work out your own salvation before you go to work on somebody else's. In this moment of time, this is the easiest place that you will ever have to get it right with God. Holy Ghost is here. The presence of God has rested on this place. There was an anointing for deliverance in this house. The minstrels are playing. The atmosphere is set. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that, that would embarrass you. I'm simply going to ask you with every eye closed and every head bowed, if you would raise your hand and we're going to pray together. Just raise your hand and, and, and say, Lord, I'm, I, I want to do better. Lord, I want to do better. Yes, Lord, I want to do better. That's, that's all we're saying on today, God, is that, Lord, I want to do better. We're not, we're not saying that, that God, I, I want a Maybach. God, I want you to, 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 to enlarge my, no, 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 no. Lord, I want, I want to be better because, Lord, if I'm better, my situation becomes better because I'm the game changer. Lord, I want to be better. I see all those hands that's raised. You can put your hands down now. And now I just want, see, the thing about corporate prayer, you don't have to say what I say. You just got to be in agreement with what I'm praying. And you can receive the benefit of the prayer. So I saw all of those hands up. Here's, here's what I want to do. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you with the authority given to me as a man of God, as a pastor that God called in this house and established in this house. I'm going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, today we come to your throne boldly. First and foremost, God, we want to thank you. Because it could have been so much worse than it is. So God, we say thank you for how you've kept us, how you've covered us. How you've looked over us, God. How you put a hedge of protection around us, God. How you have valued us, God, we thank you. The second thing, God, we want to say we're sorry. We're sorry because we haven't served you to the best of our ability. Lord, it's not that, that we wake up with a desire to sin. It's just that we take moments off. It's, it's, not, it's not that we despise your word, God, but, but at times, God, we've placed people's words over your word, God. And we're sorry. 
God, we recognize that every word that proceedeth out your mouth will never fall flat, but it shall accomplish what you sent it to accomplish. So, God, we repent from not receiving the word, the words of your true prophets and the written word of God that you've given to us. And we ask, Father, that you will give us a, another chance, God. Reset us, God. Start us over today, God. Your word says that you are faithful and that you are just and that if we confess to you, you will forgive us, God. So we thank you right now and we receive your forgiveness. And we're on the lookout, God, for the next test. Ha. We won't hide from it, God. We'll engage it, God. We'll engage with the understanding that the adversary may look big, God, but that you're bigger. We'll engage it with the understanding, God, that you put people in here that's going to help us with this test. We will engage it from, from a standpoint that we're going to follow what the prophet said concerning our situation. And we're going to listen to that insignificant voice that you're speaking, God that you're using to talk to us, to coach us through this season of our life, God. Have your way in us and have your way through us. It's in your son Jesus' matchless name that we pray. Amen? Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because when we pray, you hear me, Lord. When we pray, God, you always hear God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. At this time, we're going to receive our offering. And immediately following that, we'll have our announcements for the week. And then we will dismiss. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Bless that elder. And bless that pastor. Hallelujah. Mm. Bless that pastor. Bless you, elder. Hallelujah. All right, momentum. Here's another test of your faith. Oh, I did say that, didn't I? Hey, this ties in offerings time. So I say, if the Lord had placed upon your heart, please, by all means, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Remember that. And behind me, we have several ways of giving. And if you look in front of the seat, you should see a yellow envelope in front of you. So I'm asking Deacon Smith to come on down. And the way we do here at Momentum, we're going to ask you, once you have filled out the envelope, please stand. And as the Word of God said, we want you to bring the offering. Amen. And if you don't have it to give here at Momentum, remember that as the Bible says, you are the offering. Give me time to come on, give me time. We still got some still writing, so. Nah. So let us all rise, and if you, I'm going to ask from our praise and worship team, y'all come on down. All right, Mother Jones, our next section, please come.
ないかもハレルヤハレルヤ。Put your hands to the sea, if you don't mind, please. Most grateful Heavenly Father, God Almighty, Father God, we thank thee, Father God, for you who, for simply who you are, Father. Now, Father God, as your word says, you love a chip forgiver, Father God, and we thank you, Father God, because we did it, Father God, out of joy, not grudgingly, Father God, or out of necessity, Father God. Father God, right now, only because of what your word says, and we trust in you by faith, Father God. Now, Father God, we ask, Father God, for those that wanted to give, Father God, because you give seed to the soil, Father God. We ask, and those that gave out of their lack, Father God, Make it turn around, Father God, 67, even 100 fold, Father God. Because, Father God, it has been planted into momentum, which is good ground, Father God, which is only going to be bringing further of your kingdom, Father God. We love you, we adore you, and cherish you. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear from our very own Deacon Jackson the announcements. Still morning time. <laughs> I'm Deacon Jackson on behalf of my family's team. My wife had to go.、Uh, so I'm going to do announcements. Our worship service now begins at 9 30 and Sunday school at 8 a.m. Please make a note and adjust your schedule accordingly. Join us this and every Thursday for TNT, Thursday night teaching, The Bomb. It begins with corporate prayer at 6 30 p.m. 6 30, y'all. Worship promptly starts at 7 p.m. following our pastoral teaching. Come out for prayer, worship, teaching, and fellowship. We are in before 7 and out by 8. Volunteers are needed for our media team. If you have a love for technology and spreading the good news of Jesus on multiple media platforms, see Brother Terrell after service today. Volunteers are needed for our youth department. The children are our future and need a foundation of biblical understanding and character development. If you are good with kids and of good moral standing in the community, see Minister Peoples after service today. The following is our calendar for the remainder of March 2024. Join Pastor Watson and all of Momentum Church this Good Friday as our pastor ministers from the topic. Today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, now. The service will be at Restoration Outreach Ministries 6479 Winchester Suite, number 115. Thanks to all who made the School of Servanthood this month. We enjoyed it, Pastor. We had a wonderful time discussing and learning how to properly pray. The next class will be Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. on Zoom, where we will discuss how to study the Bible and God's view of worship. We will be meeting once a month for the remainder of 2024. We all have been called to dominion and have a responsibility to grow in the things of God. And growth only comes when you plan it, not by luck or by accident.、Yeah. Mark your calendar momentum as we prepare to celebrate the greatest day in history.、Yeah. Yeah. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we prepare for this powerful day, Pastor Watson is teaching a series every week at TNT, The Bomb. Entitled The Messiah. We want this to be the biggest resurrection Sunday that Momentum has ever had, and we need your help. We still need volunteers to assist. Lastly, join our daily prayer Monday through Saturday at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Please make time to be on both prayer calls. The number is toll free 605 313 5 8 5 5 5851, access code 672 7261. Thank you all. The toll free number 
313-5851. Our access code is 672-7261. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Just have one small, we'll say, uh, obsession, right? So remember, so actually it's next week, right? Resurrection Sunday. Yes, yes. So Momentum Church, you know, it's jeans and t-shirt day. Amen. So wear your best Jesus or Messiah t-shirt. <gasps> right. We do, not tradition, mother. Amen. Mm -mm. Jeans and t-shirt. So let us all stand. Prepare our hearts to be dismissed. Oh, uh, brunch? Oh, you, you feeding us too? Oh, 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 look at God. See, you want how to get your suit dirty. Amen. Most grateful for heaven, Father. God Almighty, Father God, we just lift you up even more, Father God, because you are Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning, and you have entered this service, Father God, for us, Father. Now, Father God, as we leave this place, because we can never leave your presence, because your eyes is everywhere, Father. So we thank thee, Father God. Now, Father God, we ask for your heads of protection around each and every household that is represented, Father God, as they leave here, Father God. Father God, keep them safe as they travel the highways and byways, Father. And Father God, let them arrive to their destination even safer, Father. Father God, we love you, we adore you, we worship you and cherish you, Father. And it's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen. Amen. And Momentum Church, you are dismissed.